new Super Mario Brothers. Mario returned bigger than ever when Nintendo decided to update and reboot the classic platforming style of the games from which Mario became so popular in the first place. And while it's not the most broken game ever, all the graphical polish in the world isn't gonna stop it from having a slight glitch or two. Or three. So let's kick things off in World 1-1 where things are not completely as they seem. Towards the end of World 1-1 is this Red Koopa Trooper. And if you perform the following actions, things are about to get pretty strange. Firstly, what we need to do is grab this green Koopa Trooper who's just off to the left of the screen. That's it, pick him up. The red Koopa Trooper walks back and forth on these brick blocks. And here's where the trickiness happens. We need to time throwing this green shell at the last brick block when the red Koopa Trooper is just about to step on it. The timing for this is pretty hit and miss, so you may have to give it a couple of tries. But if you do it correctly, old red Koopa Trooper over here is now kind of invisible? No, that's not the right word. He's invulnerable? I don't know, he's just not doing much. Basically, Mario now doesn't hurt the Koopa Trooper and the Koopa Trooper doesn't hurt Mario. But the Koopa Trooper is also not dead, so when it wakes up, now they're the best of friends. They can now just take casual walks with each other. It's so friendly. Absolutely nothing will hurt this Koopa Trooper, so even using Fire Mario doesn't do a single thing. Which is also a good job he doesn't hurt Mario either. Here's a strange and visually comedic glitch you you can check out in World 3-A. Towards the end of the stage is this green pipe and if you jump up into it, you'll go to this area with the water. Now if you run towards the water and then just as you enter it, turn to go in the other direction, still holding left if you were going right, this will happen. Mario will now continue sliding backwards if you keep holding left and this is just kind of funny to watch, really. Due to the confines of this area, you won't slide very far, but you will just get stuck against the screen just sliding. I mean, wow. To end the glitch, all you have to do is just let go of holding any direction, and Mario returns to normal. A very simple to do and fun to watch glitch. The Mega Mushrooms seen throughout this game are a brand new addition to Mario's items. And they're supposed to be a one-shot deal that you use there and then whenever Mario touches them. However, if Mario touches an unbreakable block and the Mega Mushroom at the same time, that Mega Mushroom will then be put in Mario's items. This is essentially like Mega Mushroom storage. What happens is there's not enough room above Mario's head for him to grow, so the game just lets him keep it. It's a pretty difficult glitch to get down, but all you have to do is touch the unbreakable block and the Mega Mushroom on the same frame, and then you'll keep it. Using Mega Mushrooms, we can perform a glitch in any of the first Bowser Jr. fights. All we have to do is eat the Mega Mushroom and then keep attacking Bowser Jr. until it runs out. Just standing next to Bowser Jr. with the Mega Mushroom in effect, you can see that he does take some kind of damage, or he just remains on his back, and this is going to put him in a weird state. When the Mega Mushroom finally runs out and Bowser Jr. returns to normal, when you take the next hit, he'll end up on his back as expected. Now, usually, if Mario jumps on Bowser Jr. again while he's on his back, that counts as a hit. But because of the things we did with the Mega Mushroom, those hits now don't count. Jump on him as much as you want, but it's not gonna do any damage. The only way to hurt Bowser Jr. now is to perform a ground pound. This is a pretty weird glitch, but thankfully it doesn't harm anything, and the only reason I can think that it occurs is the Mega Mushroom creates kind of an overflow of how many hits Bowser Jr. can take. Usually, when not performing this glitch, a ground pound counts as two hits, and that maybe somehow counteracts this glitch? I'm not entirely sure. While we're still hanging out with Bowser Jr., there's another glitch you can do in World 2, 3, and World 5 castles. In the last phase of these Bowser Jr. fights, he'll jump upwards. If you can bounce Mario off Bowser Jr.'s head at the peak of this jump, you can get out of bounds. Usually, at the end of these fights you can see what's called an iris shot which is shaped like Mario's head, which closes in the center of the screen. But if you end the fight out of bounds it'll close in the top left or right hand corners, and you'll barely see it. This glitch isn't anything too crazy, but it's interesting to know that it can be done. While we're still on the topic, there's yet another glitch that involves Bowser Jr. In fights where Bowser Jr. is wearing a bandana, if you throw a green shell at him while he runs towards you, he'll flip on his back and he's still wearing the bandana. However, if you pick up the 
green shell once he's thrown it at you, and then wait for Bowser Jr. to get inside his shell, then fire the green shell back at him. Now, when Bowser Jr.'s flipped on his back, suddenly, no bandana. But then, the minute you jump on him, the bandana is back. This is some kind of crazy magic bandana. What kind of witchcraft is this? If the bandana was supposed to keep Bowser Jr.'s identity safe, well, we all saw your face, and in your most vulnerable moment. In World 2-3, you'll reach this point with a piranha plant and two flippers that face each other. If you drop Mario to the floor below and then try to get him to stand where the two flippers meet, some very strange things will happen. Basically, Mario will be stuck on the spot and be frozen in a weird pose, like this one where he's standing? With the leg? That's a good leg. Kinda looks like he's squaring up to the piranha plant. You want a piece of this? I hope you like Italian, cause that's what I'm made of. Or if you ground pound, Mario will just be sat there hoping he doesn't get eaten. If you ask me, it's all flipping crazy. How's my butt look? Does it look good? In World 8-3, you're gonna find these giant bubbles, which look kinda gross, but there's a glitch involved, so stick with it. Now this is kind of tricky to get right, but you need Mario to bounce directly on top of this bubble to the point where he can no longer move away from it. What happens is these bubbles take away any control from you once you bounce off them. And if you get Mario bouncing dead on the top of them, he's gonna hit the ceiling, come back down, bounce, and just keep bouncing forever. This glitch serves absolutely no purpose whatsoever, but uh, enjoy the up and down ride of this one. In World 4-A, you can find this room with a P-switch and a whole ton of blocks. Now just go nuts breaking blocks, including the ones all around the P-switch, and you're gonna find that this guy just floats in the air. Now this isn't normal normal P-switch behavior because in World 5C the exact same scenario crops up and this P-switch will fall to the ground with nothing underneath it. So either this P-switch is magic or somebody at Nintendo forgot to program a thing. It's most definitely the second one. But then in the World 1 castle you have this Dry Bones and his problem is definitely not gravitational. If you can jump on his head and break him up so his body is on the moving platform but his head is on the stationary platform, when he pulls himself back together his head is gonna drop through the stationary platform floor. I think this calls for an action replay. That is a head spinning glitch right there. Oh jeez, I felt that one. <clears throat> Here's a random glitch in the World 3 Ghost House. At the beginning of the stage you'll find this question mark switch and that activates some stairs just to the left. Normally when you tap the bottom screen item it'll drop straight down to the ground. However if you stand underneath these stairs and then activate the item it'll now slowly drop down towards the ground through the stairs. Now now you can do this with fire flowers and every single kind of mushroom, but the most interesting mushroom to do it with is the Mega Mushroom. Once it's finished slowly descending through the wall, once it hits the ground it just bounces back and forth. I had no idea going through walls was so exciting. I guess we can find out firsthand as there's a couple of glitches that do exactly that. In World 1-4 you'll reach this point with the Red Koopa Trooper. Pick him up and watch him go as he destroys all the bricks on the way down to the 1-Up block. When you see the 1-Up, stand on this block, jump up in the air and ground pound. Keep holding down and then jump immediately afterwards and a hidden block should appear. If you now let go of down on the d-pad, you'll be pushed through the wall. You've probably seen this exact kind of glitch in all the Mario classics. The same kind of glitch can be done in World 2 Castle. If you reach this area with the wrecking ball and the bullet build turret, you can just duck in this corner and then jump. If you release down on the d-pad at the right time, Mario will be pushed through the wall yet again. Pretty sweet. If you've now got a taste for this sliding through walls craziness, there's a couple of other glitches you should learn about. These next few glitches all involve the challenge mode, which is a mode of the game which you cannot travel backwards through a world. After finishing the game, if you press start on the map screen and press LR, LR, XX, Y, Y, you should see this message for the challenge mode. With challenge mode now in effect, head to world 1-2. Because of the nature of challenge mode and the fact that you cannot scroll the screen backwards through a world, you can create these tiny little spaces that Mario can jump into. You have to be very careful not to scroll the screen too far forward, otherwise you'll have to restart the stage. But if you get it just right, Mario can fit inside this gap and keep jumping till he's off screen. Now you can just keep running to the right, but eventually you'll get stopped because you're not supposed to be in this area. So this isn't exactly the most useful version of this glitch, but there are more interesting versions of it. For instance, if you try this same glitch out in World 6-4, once Mario gets to the top of this gap, he'll continue just sliding through the wall. Best thing about this is unlike World 1-2, you'll actually pop out at the other end. 
the best version of this glitch can be seen in World 2-5. Towards the end of this stage is a secret room where a star coin can be found. If we now scroll the screen just enough that we create this gap at the top of the room, we next need to use this block hopper to get up there. The best thing to do is just keep jumping until you get lucky and get pushed in the gap. If you're successful, Mario will now slide to victory and pass the flagpole. You'll eventually come to a stop as the screen locks to the right hand side, but all you have to do is keep jumping and eventually you'll end up standing on an invisible block. Then you can hang out in an area you're not really supposed to play around in and then just finish the stage as there's not really an awful lot to do here. But it's always fun to break the rules. Our final version of this glitch happens in World 8.3 and it's very tricky to get right. Yet again we need to create this small gap between the screen edge and the wall and it's very difficult not to get pushed to the right. If you somehow manage to pull this off, keep swimming to the left and go through the giant eel that's trying to eat you. I definitely recommend using a fire flower for this as I managed to get hurt twice on the way to the gap. Once you're in the gap, keep jumping until Mario is off screen. Now that you're off screen, the giant eel will follow you as he's programmed to follow Mario wherever he goes. You can keep swimming all the way to the right and then to the end of the stage, but you're gonna hit a dead end as there's nowhere else to go. You're kind of stuck here. You'll just see the eel slowly leave the screen and that's it. All you can do is wait for the time to run out or pause and exit the world. Our next glitch occurs in World 4-6. For this really simple glitch, all you need to do is ride Dory to these three green pipes with piranha plants poking out of them. Now all you have to do is stand here and wait in this spot until the timer reaches 1.40. Once it reaches 1.40, you can start moving through the stage again and then from here, take a big run and jump to the right. And then, no, your eyes are not deceiving you, Mario is walking around in the air. From here, do not go too far to the left, otherwise you'll fall right in the drink. But by all means, continue heading to the right and enjoy running around on absolutely nothing. Although eventually, once you reach this area, you'll be somehow teleported to somewhere I don't know, and you'll be stuck. I have no idea what happened here, I was just, that was it. I was done, I was done. I was able to move to the left and the right and catch it with Dory and see what these guys were doing, but uh, yeah, that was it. But it's a really simple glitch to do and a lot of fun to mess around with. This next glitch is a fun one. In the World 4 Ghost House, you can find these spinning platforms that move Mario from area to area. When Mario is on one of these platforms, it freezes everything in game. But this also works if Mario just jumps on it for a frame or two and then jumps right back off again. So this now freezes everything in the world, which means the boos don't move. Whenever you touch a coin block, the coin just pops out, but nothing happens. And these brick blocks, well, they do break, but the debris doesn't fall to the ground. If your fire flower Mario, you can shoot fireballs, but they'll just hang in the air, just frozen in time. Look at these boos, they seem to be getting a kick out of that trick. You like that one, huh? Look at that face. Funnily enough, any blocks with power-ups in them don't do anything, so that's, uh, really useful. If Mario touches any of the boos, then the glitch ends and everything returns back to normal. Likewise, the same thing will happen if Mario jumps on the spinning platforms that caused this whole mess in the first place. It's a tricky one to pull off, but it's a fun glitch nonetheless, and I like how just nothing works right anymore. In the World 4 castle, you meet this Goomba who turns into a giant Goomba. Yeah, it's a pretty neat trick. And here's where our next glitch comes into effect. Before this fight begins, make sure you have a Mega Mushroom, stand in this spot, and then use it. Now all you have to do is jump to the right to enter the cutscene that brings on the Goomba, and depending on the timing of where you jump and how you land, you're gonna get some pretty interesting results. For instance, you may see the Goomba just waddle onto screen halfway in the air. Or he may not appear on screen at all. The transformation of him getting big will just happen in the air somewhere, and then he'll gracefully float down to the ground. I just love how dumb this glitch looks, and every time you try it will be a different result, so go nuts. While we're still talking about this Goomba fight, if you have a Mega Mushroom, just use it at any point in the fight and then wait for it to run out. When it does eventually run out, you'll notice that the boss music for this fight doesn't actually return, and you'll be treated to a brand new soundtrack. It's called Clumpy Clumpy Goomba Feet. It's uh, never gonna make any top tens, that's for sure. At the end of World 7, you'll fight Lackey Thunder, and there's another glitch in this boss too. You'll need the blue shell power up for this glitch, and basically what you have to do is hit Lackey Thunder twice in succession very fast. It's kinda tricky, and it'll take a bit of time, but it's very possible. Also, this has to be done on the first and second hits. If you do it on the third, obviously you'll kill Lackey Thunder. If you manage to pull this off, Lackey Thunder will now freeze in place. I guess the game doesn't expect you to hit him so 
quickly and doesn't actually know what to do from this point onwards. But just because he's frozen in place doesn't mean he won't hurt you. Ah oh man, I almost feel bad for the guy. Maybe I should just put him out of his misery. Ah, he goes on to a better place. Our final glitches happen at the final boss. It kind of makes sense, really. The first glitch with the final boss is to do with beating Bowser out of order. The game fully expects you to beat Bowser Jr. and then Bowser, but using a fire flower, you can take out Bowser, well, with relative ease, it may take some practice, but you can take him out first. With Bowser gone, finish off Bowser Jr. and then you'll notice that the music for this boss battle keeps on playing. The trigger for the music to end is when you push the big red button and drop Bowser into the lava below, but having already beaten him with fireballs, just beat Bowser Jr. and then you can run around until your heart's content. The second glitch in this fight also involves beating Bowser first and also having a Mega Mushroom. Wait until there's just one more hit for Bowser Jr. to be taken down. When Bowser Jr. throws a green shell at you, keep this shell and then wait till Bowser Jr. is close to where Peach is. With Bowser Jr. now on his back, quickly use the Mega Mushroom and then jump off Bowser Jr. while still holding jump and you'll be able to reach Peach at the top of the room. Now just wait for the Mega Mushroom to end and with Bowser Jr. and Bowser gone, you can just stand next to Peach. Well, she's kinda saved, I guess. I mean... I don't think this is how the game is supposed to end. Ah well, that's the end of that and some cool and quirky glitches you can try out in New Super Mario Brothers. And if you like this episode, why not check out the rest of the series featuring a ton of Mario games? You can click that playlist there for more glitchy goodness. You can follow the show on Twitter or any of the other social media to keep up to date on all things Son of a Glitch. And as always, a huge thanks to everybody who supports the show on Patreon. See ya!